Hello, everyone. We are live from the OFA 2021 Oakville Film Festival. Thank you, everyone, who is here today. Uh, you know, it's a little bit hot and sticky. Uh, yesterday, we had some rain, but uh, it's a little warm, but it's a perfect movie day because it's uh, a little sticky out there. So thank you for being here today. Uh, we've got lots of things to celebrate. We are celebrating uh, Multiculturalism Day, and uh, we got to screen some amazing, amazing films. Um, we are also celebrating the Women Who Give event. So we have uh, our feature film, A Girl from Mogadishu, uh, an incredible film that we're going to talk about. Um, but let's just first start with our thank yous to our sponsors. So thank you Zonta International and Zonta Oakville uh, for presenting the film. Uh, partial proceeds from the multi Multiculturalism Day Pass and the All Access Pass will go to Zonta. Um, so it's a really great organization that helps to empower women and to educate. So thank you so much for, for bringing us this film. Um, next, I just want to thank our filmmakers and our lovely guest, Ifra, who are here today. Uh, thanks for showing up and, and talking about your stories. It's so great for the audience, um, even just if you, if you love film or if you're thinking about becoming a filmmaker, uh, getting into the minds of these creative filmmakers that we have, and to just to learn a little bit about the background and what goes into film. So thank you so much for being here and sharing your stories. Um, thank you to the OFA board members. You guys work tirelessly to bring this festival alive and we are so grateful for you. Thank you to Wendy and thank you to Tori who are here today. Um, you're behind the scenes, but we definitely are grateful for all the work you do. Uh, lastly, thank you to our viewers. You guys are why we do this. Uh, we hope that you enjoy all the films that we bring you and uh, your support is so amazing and so appreciated. Um, but I have two favors to ask of you. Uh, one, don't forget to vote. You can vote for each short and each feature at the bottom of your screen. There's a one to five rating, one being a lower score, five being the highest score, and you can rate every single uh, short and feature that you screen during the festival. So that really helps with the Audience Choice Award. Uh, number two, if you'd like to get involved in this Q&A, you can post some questions in the chat and then I can ask our filmmakers right here and you can get involved in the conversation. Um, definitely lots of feelings about our films today. Uh, we had uh, two excellent short films pick. Uh, it was a Canadian short film by Alicia Harris. Um, and now we have uh, Leaving to Live. That was our second short film. And we actually have director David Rodriguez here. Hi, David. Thanks for being here all the way from France. <laughs> yes. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for the selection on your festival. And, um, and thank you for the Q&A. <laughs> thank you for being here. It's, it's so great. And I think you know, we want to look at virtual being a bad thing or tired of it, but it also brings us the opportunity to get to talk to you from afar. So thank you so much okay. for being here. I, I have my cup of tea. It's okay. <laughs> Perfect. What time is it there right now? Quite mi midnight uh, and 14. It's okay. It's okay. I'm happy to be there. Thank you very much. Okay. Perfect. We're, we're happy to have you. Uh, next, I want to introduce our director for A Girl from Mogadishu, Mary McGuckian. Hello, how are you? Hi, Alicia. Lovely to be here. Thank you for organizing all of this. We are so happy to have you. Thank you for telling us this story. Um, a little bit about you. Uh, you were born in Northern Ireland. Um, you completed your education in uh, Trinity College in Dublin. Um, you got involved with Trinity Players Theatre Company and you established Penbridge Pictures in 2001. Um, and now you serve on the board of the IFRA Foundation. So next I wanna introduce our amazing guest of honor, Ifra Ahmed. Thank you so much for being here. Um, you know, the subject of this film, we are just so lucky to talk to you and to have you here. And thank you for sharing your story. Hi. <laughs> thank you for having me and Mary, actually. Well, uh, you know, Ifra, you, you, you've you done so much. You've, you've been appointed as the gender advisor to the president of Somalia. You've been appointed as human rights advisor to the government of Somalia. Um, you've coordinated the first national gathering of FGM attended by the government ministers. I mean, you've just done so, so much. Um, so thank you for, for telling the story. And I think it's, it's films like these that are just in dire need of more eyes just to, to create awareness, to educate. Um, so yes, thank you to all of our guests for being here. Uh, we'll get right into it. 
uh, maybe we'll talk a little bit about the the birth story of of how uh, Mary and Ifra. How did you guys meet? <laughs> well, uh, Ifra, can you remember? Yes, I can remember very well. We met in France in Cannes Film Festival, mm -hmm. and we yeah, and Mary, you, we you met through a uh, true friend who was working with you and Hesia. Mm -hmm. who did a small uh, interview about female genital mutilation for a UNHCR called Too Much Pain. But uh, I met with Mary at, at dinner. I remember sitting there and somehow we've been sitting from opposite each other and then we start conversation. So I told her where I'm from. Maybe Mary can finish. <laughs> okay. Um, it was um, it was a, a pitch event for young filmmakers from Ethiopia, hosted by the UNHCR and an organisation called IEFTA, in which I'm involved in, in with uh, run by Marco Rossini in Monaco. Anyway, Ifra was there, and I assumed she was one of the filmmakers. And I remember going up to her and saying, "And so, um, where are you from?" And Ifra said, "Drumcondra, which is actually a very specific area of Dublin." Um, in a very Irish action, act, <laughs> place. Anyway, you finished up by showing me your Irish passport, I think. Anyway, we got chatting and um, your story is phenomenal. And I think, I think somebody in the UNHCR felt a documentary should be made, but actually a documentary had already been made about your story. Let's look, I don't make documentaries, but let's, when we're back in Ireland, let's talk about seeing if we can get this story to happen. So that's uh, how we met. I, I mean, I'm sure once you met her, you just felt even more compelled to tell this story. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, uh, you, you guys do so much with your foundation. Why don't you talk a little bit about the, the EFRA Foundation and, and what you're doing? Ifra, you, you should take that up maybe. Ifra had already set up the EFRA Foundation and really all, all that, I suppose from the time of the movie, then you reformatted it, isn't that it, Ifra? To... Mm. Um, yeah. Um... We set up, actually, I went back to Somalia in 2014. And I was then it just IFRA, but thanks to Mary, who got her friends, who are now uh, the board member of the foundation. And I was lucky to have an umbrella that, you know, I belong to because I, I had nothing. And we set up IFRA Foundation, and IFRA Foundation is work is uh, empowering and we were being legislating, fighting for the legislation, but which is, it didn't happen. Um, we do media empowerment, uh, community education. And since then, IFRA from a foundation been doing a lot of work in different ways of, um, you know, prevention of female genital mutilation. And um, I don't know if you have read it or come across with the story of young girl, uh, 10 years old who died for bleeding at called the Deca. And Deca story was not just uh, a story of uh, Somalia, but it became a story of international. And Deca story was break by um, one of the journalists we trained uh, by IFRA Foundation and Global Media Campaign who then was supporting on IFRA Foundation. So um, basically, we do a lot and we've been campaigning on getting the legislation in Somalia, but overall we have done it um, through education over 10,000 people, uh, young people, elders and religious leaders and political levels. Uh, we try to bring everyone together. Mm, Somalia is a country where FGM is practiced uh, almost 100% and it's not easy. And now um, IFRA Foundation, we developed a um, very um, campaign that actually close to my heart. It's called uh, Dear Daughter. And I remember Dear Daughter was an idea for me when I first uh, established with Mary coming to her when I been to Somalia and just thinking, meeting mothers who always say that, no, uh, I was cut and I want my daughter to be cut. I want she to feel the pain. And that was so much painful for me. And I feel a little bit uh, stressed about mothers who have been through such, um, such a terrible practice and they wanted 
their daughters to to feel the same pain they have felt. So I had an idea just, you know, how can we persuade mothers to not just cut their daughter, but also to make a, a pledge or to promise or to do something for their child so the daughter will not go to what mother have been to. And now we actually developed our dear daughter, which is going to be landed in a few weeks. So uh, now uh, I'm a mother to one year old baby, one year old few months, and is a baby girl. For me, um, it was um, six years ago when I had the idea of uh, dear daughter, it was just kind of a campaign that I wanted to protect young girls from female genital mutilation. But now it became my own personal reality because when I look at my own child, I don't want, like I will never accept it, anyone to harm her. So I feel more now, dear daughter is really related to me because I don't want anything to happen my own daughter. And that's, just, you know, same as other mother to think that, um, you know, the, the daughter deserve better. So um, now I'm taking next challenge on the daughter campaign and we developed with uh, UNFPA is going really well. We just uh, kick off our first videos of pledge, which is, is finishing next few days and hopefully it will be aired on, on some time. Not only that, but I wanted uh, millions of Somali mothers, uh, future mothers, uh, even grandmothers and fathers to make same place to their grandchild and also mothers to make the same place to their daughters. And I wanted that, you know, Somali mother to say that I want my daughter to be free from practice that or whatever I have been through. So for me, it's really um, now is another step and another challenge for way forward on IFRA Foundation. Uh, I never spoke about my daughter. That is the reality. But I think, you know, um, question you asked brought me to speak my, my foundation, where we at and, you know, how excited I am for to build and bring it out for the daughter campaign. So thank you for the question. Thank you for sharing that. Congratulations on being a mom. I mean, that must have been such an incredible experience to know that I am the start of changing a cycle within my family. And I mean, thank you. I, I just so much gratitude for, for you for, for sharing that. I, I mean, I'm <laughs> holding back tears right now. Um, so, so thank you. Um, I mean, telling, telling these vulnerable stories, um, it, it it's, seems like an incredibly daunting task. Um, why don't we talk to David a little bit? Um, you had to share a really uh, vulnerable story of, of, of a woman in learning to live um, with domestic violence. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, telling this story in a short film? Yes, um, yes, uh, Living to Live is a short film. Um, the story of, uh, of a woman uh, whose name Alexandra who makes a, an important decision that will change her life, leaving her marital um, um, home with her seven-year-old daughter, whose name is Leah. And she asked her to make a promise to say nothing to, to her father. And uh, like, you, like you said, uh, Elita, it, uh, the, the purpose of this film is to denounce uh, violence against women. And uh, it was very important for me to, to tell this story um, for all the, the women victims of violence, but also for all the children uh, who are also victims of, 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 this, of this violence. And I, you did it in such a beautiful way. I mean, I didn't really know what, where the direction was going to go. And then with the box, I thought that was such a beautiful way that, you know, this was how the child was seeing. If, if I can put daddy's anger in a box, then I can lock it away and then mommy won't be sad anymore. Um, where did that idea come from with, with the box? The idea came... Um from my, my daughter, <laughs> to whom uh, we, we read this book with my wife. And uh, my wife, Lucy Guirou, who is my co-writer. So thanks to her, uh, to, to being my, 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 my co-writer on this, on this project. Um, and, uh, and then we, we thought we, we could include this story with the anger to, 
to use this, this idea to do a, like a parallel with uh, the anger of the father that cannot be uh, contained. So that's with my, my daughter. So thank you to my, <laughs> to my daughter. I love, love that. I think we, with love, we can do, um, we can um, maybe um, invent stories um, to, to, to give some, um, some message, some... Um... Absolutely, yes. You're, you're telling these kids these stories and you, know, you might be reading books or maybe you're just telling oral stories and you're sharing traditions. Um, and you know, sometimes it, it does mean changing cultural traditions and you know, going back to uh, In a Girl from Mogadishu, um, you know, Ifra, you, you're struggling with trying to keep the cultural traditions alive. You know, you, you, you have this, you're Somalian and that's, you know, you're trying to maintain that, but also shifting into realizing maybe these traditions, they're wrong, you know, and, and finding a way to balance your culture and, and certain things that, that violate human rights. Um, now, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your experience with with Aja, who was who was playing you in the film. Uh, I mean, she 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 just did such an incredible job. I, I felt so many things, um, and then meeting you to see the the actual face behind it. Uh, tell us a little bit about that experience of someone playing you. Oh, you're muted. I'm mute. <laughs> Sorry, I really had a great. Um, great time with Asia being playing me. Uh, there was a moment that we both saw emotion and there was a moment that we were both having fun, so great. And especially, you know, when you actually look at someone who you think, oh, you see that they're different world and, you know, someone is famous and doing, you know, other things and being in Hollywood and things like that. And then when I meet her present, she was completely different and the best human that I can ever think. Because, you know, I really had a great time and it's been so fun just to work with her and, you know, show it, like basically how she dressed. Um, this afternoon, I had a visitor at home and then they were talking about the movie and they say, oh, and you know, the lady who was playing you, she wore everything. She was exactly you. And mm -hmm. I said to them, that is the point. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there was a time I could actually make an argument if she has a little bit different, what I have, like color, scarves and earrings and wings and all that. And if I see anything different, I would actually make a complaining and say, no, this is not me. And I remember when the movie was over finished the shooting, I went her and I say, give my crack the bag. And I say, you know, it's just, she's, she was amazing women. And, you know, I can say that it's great that she was one who played. And I can now say Mary that she made it really right choice to Asia to play me. Uh, Mary, maybe you can talk about a little bit about that process and finding Asia. It was very, very difficult. Um, and we were very lucky. I mean, Asia is, is phenomenal. Um, we, you know, we, we were struggling to, it had to be somebody who Perfect. could play, you know, I mean, you know, learn Somali, perfect South African, you know, East African accent in English with a tinge of Irish. Um, and, you know, if it's a phenomenal charisma, I know it's here on the Zoom, Ifra, but, you know, larger than life, incredibly compelling and charismatic character. And that's, so it was a lot of us. Um, and I think it was one of the other, I was actually in LA, you know, doing different castings with different people. And um, a, a one of the line producers, and they do, so, you know, you do know Asia, Asia and I hadn't thought of her. Um, and I was only there for two days more. And she, re she read the script overnight and came to meet for it immediately and just said she absolutely was blown away and wanted to play it. And then when she agreed to do it, do you remember if we went back to meet her? So we were in, if it was in Washington doing, you know, it was a bit mad. She was in Washington doing the, it was the first global conference on FGM at Washington, in Washington just after Trump took over, I think, and UN women looked like they were going to be decimated. And it was, it was a kind of a bit of a tough few days, but anyway, it was a, an important conference. 
And then there was kind of a spare day and a few, we thought, let's go to LA for the day. <laughs> so you can meet Asia. And it was the most extraordinary thing, the two of you. It was like this great kind of, um, uh, there was such respect both ways and deference. And then there was kind of a moment when Ifra and I, I you know, it was so generous if we to give you a story. And then at a certain moment, if, if we started, te- you know, talking about campaigning and all of the complexities around FGM and all the campaigning that's going on, eventually I leaned forward, I think, and said, she's only playing you, Ifra. She's not going to actually play you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then, and then you t- turned up and said, uh, oh, yes. And so what about your, I mean, Asia tells that story better, isn't it? Well, do you have a boyfriend or I think? Or yeah. <laughs> Anyway, they got on amazingly, and her, her capacity, I mean, she's just a technically brilliant actress, and her capacity to challenge you. So it got to the stage, well, first of all, it was very difficult for Asia that you were around so much, but it was important for me that you were, and it was important for her as well, and you, if I worked on the language with her and all of those things, but the, all of us started to confuse the two of you. It was really quite Yeah, yeah. most people, and mm. some people say that, oh, uh, did you play the girl from Mogadishu by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> and actually, we take a lot of pictures together and I put on Facebook and some people would just say, oh, is that your sister? Mm. Yeah. If you're around someone enough, you, you begin to... Yes, like, okay, and that is it. It's mm. not that we went looking for an impersonation. It's just that it, she really channeled the role. And I think we're yeah. each other so much, you begin yeah. to like just do certain physical yeah. things similar. Yeah. I should say about the whole costume department, which Ifra did spend time in, and every other department, but, um, you know, Ifra is very well known for being extremely, you know, has this whole unique look of fashion, and never, ever, you never see Ifra in the same outfit twice. And so it was, I think it was quite funny for you, Ifra, wasn't it, to walk into the costume department and see these walls of outfits over 10 years, um, reference material, and then help, yeah. trying to help them put it together. And it was, all, it was great fun, that side of it, actually. Yeah, I think, and most the people, they actually ask how all this material was put it together. I sh- I was shocked myself because I see <laughs> pictures around all my photos on, I don't know where they come from, but I see all my photos around and all my different outfits with earrings and all that. And next thing I know, Asia has to wear all this. And then it become really reality for me when I see Asia wearing something that I have worn and go, like, oh my God, this is exactly what I did like a year or two ago. So it was good. I love that. It sounds like it was a really authentic representation of your life and it's just such a great film. Um, we do have an audience question for you, Mary. Um, mm. Marvelous job with, with this amazing story. How has COVID, COVID impacted you getting the film and the message out? Um. COVID unfortunately devastated the film's release. I mean, it, we had spent, it had been on a kind of a momentum building tour for about six months and it had won a lot of awards and jury awards. And then it won the Cinema for Peace Foundation award at the Berlin Film Festival. And then it, and we were just, as I told you, I think before we got on the call, you know, we just started doing the premieres. We did the London premiere, then we were doing the Belgian premiere. It's a Belgian, Irish, British film. And we were just about to do a big charity premiere in Ireland for IFRA Foundation and the weekend that co and, and then it was to be released in Ireland in the UK and then the US. And basically just that weekend where we all cancelled our lives, everything got cancelled. And so it's real shame because a lot of, you know, it was doing very well. It was getting a great response. So inevitably, you know, some countries tended, you probably noticed this across the film industry, some countries tended to hold back their films and other countries tended to put them out another way. So America tended to go uh, digital quite quickly. So it ended up going straight out on Showtime in the US and none of it was coordinated with any other country. And then the UK and Ireland pushed and pushed and kept rescheduling. And eventually there was a window of an opening in December. And I don't know whether it was the right thing or not, but they, tr- they put the film out then but it was at a time when nobody could go to the cinema. And then it went very quickly online again. The good news is it's out there. The bad news is it didn't have the release it was meant to have. But sure, hey, that's happened to so many films, but at least it's out there. I mean, I'm looking at the French, David, you're in France there, and they're, that you know, French people did not put their films out digitally. So there are now 480 films waiting to be released in France. Wow. So that's going to be about 20 a week for the next. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's killing those films. So 
for in some ways, people watched a lot of stuff when it was available and when they could get to it. But of course, most stuff that was going out, like Girl from Mogadishu, which would have gone out on a very independent circuit and had built up its momentum to do that theatrically, lost that opportunity. So it, it did devastate its rollout, unfortunately. That said, we had some great screenings and some great festival outings and, and it's there and people can see it. And so keeping the awareness going is really important. And so we thank you for doing that. And if any of your audience liked the film, please tell your friends and it's all on on the website it's on or it tells you where where it's on and uh, now we have some more festivals coming up the rest of the year or this it's done so many now i, I and you, because you can actually i think in canada you don't have it but it is available in the uk and the us and ireland and a lot of other countries so um but it is continuing to go to festivals particularly uh, the other actually the other very devastating thing that happened was that we had just launched an impact campaign also internationally off the back of, of a screening in, in Nairobi. So there's the regular commercial release and then the impact screenings, which were being uh, you know, brilliantly hosted by all kinds of agencies and NGOs around the world. And in the first month, I think there were nearly a hundred of those. Wow. And then that all had to stop. So, so it's, been, it's, it's a crazy time. Crazy time, but doesn't it make you feel like we're pretty, we can be pretty resilient when we're put in a yeah, corner. Yeah, I think, yeah. it. <laughs> I think yeah. everyone learned a lot about themselves yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. Another question, I think this one is for you, Ifra. Uh, so raising awareness of an issue such as FGM at the global level is such a rare and amazing accomplishment, Ifra. Congratulations. This is a power that very few people possess. Now, would you consider using your influence for other human rights issues? Would you consider politics? <laughs> See, when you um, when you're fighting such a cost like female genital mutilation, you're not far from political, because you know um, in Ireland, FGM was legislated in 2012, and it, the bill was there before me, and it was just there. But uh, for me, speaking out. Um, talking to the political level and member of parliament and everyone, this has made it a uh, way um, different. So, um, yes, I mean, you know, um, every issues uh, that are related in human rights, it's related to my, it close my heart and it's something that I would, I speak out everything now because, you know, FGM is my main target that I really wanted to be ended and I wanted youngers to be free from female genital mutilation, but also in Somalia, because it's been war over 30 years and there is a lot of other issues, but my personal capacity, I speak out on sexual violence. And also I am a high profile supporter for UNHCR. And I do a lot of awareness about um, smuggling young people who are coming to cross Europe in wrong, who are dying on the sea and uh, losing their lives. So uh, I really do uh, other work on my voice. I put on my voice because if I can make it, if my voice can make it different with any other things, I will do it and I'm doing it. But I also wanted to make sure um, young girls are free from this horrible practice. And I want to make sure that no more girls died on FGM. Political, I'm not, I'm not far from political because, you know, everything you do, it's related to political. If the political leaders are not actually listening and hearing your voices, it's basically you become one of their favorite to be allowed, to be annoyed, to be just screaming and showing them you're there and you want to make sure that this doesn't happen. So, but um, for me, thinking join a political is a little bit too dirty for me because I want to be out of it and fight with them. So, yes. Oh, well, you're you're an amazing fighter and you keep raising that flag. We're we're waving it with you. Um, you know, you said uh, there was a line in the film. I'm not sure if this is a direct quote from you, but the only way to fix the past is focus on the future. And I, I love that. I mean, it's exactly right. Uh, you know, educating, starting as, as young as they can. Um, but then it's also when they grow up in, instilling them with the confidence that they can make a change. You know, at, at any age, you can get involved. And once we get, you know, people understanding the cause and bring that awareness, films like these do that. And you know, thank you so much for telling your stories and, and sharing these with us. 
Um, maybe we have some advice for some upcoming filmmakers who, who want to get um, other messages out. Uh, Mary or David, if you, if you have any advice on that, uh, creating a film and, and how to start maybe. Mary? Oh, where you go, David? <laughs> we haven't heard from you for a bit. You, you, oh goodness! I mean, it's it's you know, I, I often I I saw um I think it was um, Ava DuVernay or Mira Nair. I mean, actually, all all, all always say, particularly to young women who have something to say. We used to have to make films about um, you know, for by and about women by subterfuge. We weren't allowed to do it basically. Um, and so there is a moment now where where it doesn't necessarily have to be by subterfuge. I'm not saying it's easy, but um, certainly there's a moment in time now to to talk about, a, you know, to use film as a medium for for human rights messaging. Um, but uh, as they would say, and I would agree, and I don't know, David, how you feel about this, but you just got to just it's so easy to make a film now. Take your phone, take a camera. Um, tell your story, but it, you know, have, tell the story that you that that you have a feeling for, and but go ahead and do it. Don't don't wait for an invitation. Basically, what do you think, David? Uh, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, I I also have something to add because, for example, uh, Mary take issue on female genital mutilation, and is a very typical subject. And people will just go like, oh, this is very strong. And of course, Mary also had uh, other friends or, you know, other people she shared with the story that she wanted to do it. They might really give a, a negative view or maybe telling mm -hmm. she need to understand the cultural, you know, barrier. And Mary actually bravely take this story and decide to do something about it. But um, my advice is, you know, um, if you want to do something and it's really you want to make a difference about it, go for it and don't think about it because is there is something such things called their culture, their issue is their problem. Think about your neighbors, your daughter, school she goes, who she goes with, who she sits or plays with. Think about those. You know, those are the people who it, it affected the issue, whichever um, subject it is. Like for example, I can talk now female genital mutilation because you might have a, a, a daughter who goes with a, a school with other daughters, your neighbors who actually risk at FGM. You can ignore such things. So I just wanted to say, you know, if you want to make a difference, let it be something you want. Don't think about their culture, their issue. Their issue, their culture is your own issue and your own culture. And Mary take this is her own. And look now, I mean, it's in your voice, it has to be said, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> but Mary bravely do it. So I say, you know, if you want to make a difference and you think you can, don't hold it back. Just go away forward and do it. Mm. Yes, I love that there's a Native American, I think it's in Canada, and it's shared in the Celtic culture, this idea of the four universal healers. Um, but one of them is storytelling. It's in our nature to storytell. So if you have a story to tell, tell it. Yeah. Yes, and like like Mary said and and I and Ifra, um, for for young filmmakers who are maybe um, afraid because we, we we dubbed a lot. It's normal to dub. I dubbed uh, for each film before on, on when I write, when I cast for everything. We we dubbed. It's normal. Just like Mary told, you you have now very nice mobiles, uh, mobile phone. You can shoot with them. You have a friend to 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 write a story, to to tell a story. You you can really do some beautiful short film to start. You can do one short film, two, three. You will learn. So if you like cinema, just just do it. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. I mean, those are all like answers from the heart, right? If you if you feel like you are called to do something, you take that calling. No one's going to invite you, as you said, Mary. Um, so it's it's just following your dreams and and believing in something and being passionate about it and running with it. 
um, you can make the difference. If, you know, if there's changes you want to see, the change starts with you. So um, thank you guys for, for being here and for, for sharing your stories. Um, I think this is, uh, we're going to tie things up here. Um, I just want to thank Zonta International and Zonta Oakville for sponsoring and bringing us this film. Um, thank you to our viewers who got involved in the chat today. We are really grateful for you. Thank you, uh, Mary McGuckian, for, for directing and bringing us this film. Thank you, David Rodriguez, for bringing us uh, your short film, Leaving to Live. And thank you, Ifra Ahmed. We are just, I'm so honored to be just even in your virtual presence um, that you were, you're just such a strong, wonderful woman to share your story. So thank you so, so much. Um, we hope to see more from you guys and uh, Ifra, keep gunning it. We, uh, we are just gonna keep advocating and, and spreading this film. And uh, if you like these films, please don't forget to share them with your friends and uh, tell them to watch too. Um, don't forget to go to the Ifra Foundation. You can donate and get involved and support this cause and create awareness and be the change that you wanna see. So uh, thank you, everyone. Don't forget to vote. And uh, that's another day with the OFA 2021 Virtual Film Festival. We have another film tonight. Um, and we actually have two films tonight. So hope you uh, enjoy what's coming up later. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alicia. Awfully well done. Thank you.